Welcome back to QP Buckeye Insider as we're now at Nova Southeast University in Davie, Florida, which is right across the street basically from where the Miami Dolphins train as the Buckeyes continue to get ready for the Orange Bowl. And Garrett, we saw a little bit of practice today. Your impressions from what you saw in the practice field? Well, first off, it was hot. Uh, we got to about 80 degrees and uh, it was muggy. Uh, not something that the Buckeyes have been used to with you know colder temperatures the last three months, frankly, and uh, it was a little sluggish at first, but uh, I think once they acclimated themselves to the weather, uh, practice kicked up from there. And it's not just the uh, Midwesterners complaining about the weather. Apparently, Brian Hartline and Austin Spittler, a pair of former Buckeyes who now play for Miami Dolphins, came to practice, and you know what? It's too hot and muggy for us. We're coming back when it's a little bit cooler. Even though there's been a lot of not-so-positive news for the Ohio State Buckeyes the last couple of days, Urban's still feeling positive, still likes where his team is at this point. Yeah, and he should, I think. Um, you know, without Noah Spence and maybe Bradley Roby, uh, that, that would, on top of losing last their last game, that could put this team in the dumps, but I think they've had a pretty upbeat uh, demeanor, and I think that they've been pretty positive from what we've seen. As Ohio State makes the trip to Florida for several Buckeyes, including Jeff Hireman, Carlos Hyde, and Joey Bosa, it's a trip back home, Ryan Shazier from Fort Lauderdale as well. Yeah, you know, there, and really there's a lot of guys uh, from right down here in South Florida, and even Jeff Hireman had said, you know, it's not that bad muggy-wise, even though everybody's sweating. He didn't think it was really that bad. He kind of compared it to those August and uh, early early fall practices, and I think he's right. It's just uh, those guys might have a little bit more uh, acclimation to this style of weather than uh, some of the kids from Ohio. He also will hear from Jeff Hireman as what it took to lure him away from South Beach up to Columbus. <laughs> it's fun, isn't it? Yeah. South Beach, you been down there? No, not yet. Oh, you should go. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's nice, and uh, you know it's a little, a little toasty out here today. Uh, but you know, it's a night game, so you know it's like Coach My or Coach Mick was saying. You know, you use it as the edge, and uh, you know probably won't be like this when we play the game. But you know, it's getting us in good shape, and so it'll be a lot easier when we play at night. So how important is it to hydrate? We saw them pushing water on you guys all the time. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's super important, especially now. I mean, guys are probably losing you know eight, ten, ten pounds of practice, and uh, so we have the rest of the days to. Uh, you know, to hydrate and get our bodies right and uh, the rest of the nights. So, you know, it's really important and, uh, you know, that's going to be a key to victory, I think, is, you know, whoever's, you know, the most prepared team going in and uh, have the best body, so. But you're from Florida. You're used to this, right? Yeah. It's, you know, it's actually not that bad uh, when you, you know, when you practice in, you know, you know, September and August and, you know, those, those fall high school camps, you know, it's, it's brutal. And I was like, you know, Coach Meyer and I were talking, you know, it's, it's really not that bad. But it's it's completely different to what we've been, you know, all season and up, up north. And uh, so, yeah. Jeff, is this, as you're getting more acclimated, so to speak, into this, is this a pretty nice consolation prize compared to where y'all wanted to go? You understand what I'm saying? Are you enjoying it? Or? Yeah, I mean, we're having a great time. Uh, you know, obviously, we're close to South Beach. We're staying in an awesome uh, resort. I don't know if you guys have been there or not. It's, you know, right on the beach. It's been and, bad. Yeah. Well, you should come in. It's pretty sweet. And, uh you know, obviously South Beach is a ton of fun, and you know the coaches are doing a great job. You know, giving us our free time, and you know, letting us see South Beach and letting us, you know, enjoy the the whole bowl trip. And uh, so, you know, it's been great so far. Uh, the Orange Bowl committee and them have been awesome to us, and uh, the hotel has been awesome. And so, it's been a it's been a great trip so far. Is there such a thing as y'all having a psyche for this game? I mean, meaning, you know, being serious about. It. I mean, is there such a thing y'all talking about it amongst yourselves about sort of the, you know what you want to leave on this season, the mark on this season? Uh, you know, I don't know if, if we've really done, you know, talked about it like that, but, you know, it's just like today, you know, we're just treating it like a regular game week. Like today was a regular Tuesday for us. You know, we're playing on Friday and not Saturday. So Monday is Tuesday and, you know, Tuesday is going to be Wednesday. And, you know, so the rest of the week. So I think that's, you know, the coach have done a great job, you know, just against another game week. And, you know, we don't have to do anything different than we've been doing all year, you know, in the last two years. And we've been super successful uh, with what we've done. So I think we're just treating it like that. Have you seen the guys respond, I mean, just since that championship game? Having a purpose. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, you know, we had some time off and, you know, obviously the bull practices and stuff. So, you know, we got over that hump, you know, and uh, that was big for us. So, uh, you know, we're, we're coming back and, you know, we need to prove ourselves in this this game and get, uh, you know, our, our school in the Big Ten a big win. So. Uh, you know, we don't pay a whole lot of attention to that, but obviously, I mean, you see it and uh, you watch the other games. But, you know, like I said, it's just another week and, uh, you know, it's, you know, us versus Clemson and, you know, we just want to get a big win for us and a big win for the Big Ten. So I feel like this, this game uh, is, is, is more important than most of the games we've uh, 
we play this year, especially because it's a, it's a championship game. Uh, uh, not many teams get to say they went to the Orange Bowl or playing the BCS game, and, and we got the opportunity to do so, and, and especially in, in this uh, atmosphere. And, and for me, it's home, but for some guys who've never been to Miami or might not ever come back, this is going to be one of the best experiences that they're ever going to have. I don't know. We didn't notice as much of a difference when we got in. It was a little rainy, a little cloudy. Maybe it wasn't snow, but... Uh, um, very fortunate. Actually, I'm, I'm lucky enough to actually recruit down here, so I, I kind of had a little bit of an idea what to expect. And um, you know, these guys do too. Obviously, Ryan's from down here, but uh, we're excited. You know, it's it, any time you get to get out of get out of your home, go down, have have some good time, relax a little bit. Um, you know, I think all these guys are excited about it. And for me, this is the first time I've ever been to the Orange Bowl. I think I've fortunate enough to be in maybe nine BCS games and uh, never been to the Orange Bowl. So, uh, really, really exciting for for me, for these guys, I think, and, and for all of our families. Great. We'll open up to questions. We've got two microphones. Uh, we'll start over here on the left in the front row. Yeah, Coach. Obviously, uh, Coach Meyer dropped the news yesterday that Noah's not with you guys at this point. Um, is there anything more you can add to that? Is there any hope in your mind <laughs> that he could still get down here and play in this game? Well, there's always hope. Um, you know, obviously, he's dealing with some, with some things. And, you know, it's, it's one of those things that we've got to continue to move on. These guys know that. And, you know, kind of had some of those situations, and you know, CJ's been around here a long time, so he's he's been through a lot of these situations where something happens and a guy goes down or um, next man up. So uh, obviously, we'd love Noah. Uh, we wish for the best. We hope we get a chance to get him back down here. But for right now, we got We got to continue to move on. Stand the left, second row. Luke, obviously, you guys didn't play the way you wanted to down the stretch. What have you done to fix the problem? Uh, just keep working. I mean, that's that's the best thing we know how to do. And, uh, you know, there's, there's no magic to all the things that we do. Um, you know, we get better at what it is we do. These guys every day get better. They, they work well together. That's the biggest thing. I think, you know, there's not one pinpoint thing where you can say, hey, we have to do this, we have to do this, we have to do this. The reality is um, we got to all work together. And that's why football is the, the greatest team sport known to man. You know, people can point fingers and look at stats and say, you're this and this and you're this and this. And the reality is there's 11 guys out there, and they're all responsible to work together um, whether it's pass, run, doesn't matter. So uh, the, the, the ability for us to continue to get better and work together, I think, is the biggest thing we got to do. You, you said repeatedly that you like, you'd rather be criticized than praised. Um, given the way the defense has played, uh, the criticism that you've come under, I mean, how do you deal with that? We don't listen to start with. You know, and sometimes uh, you know, my kids are at an age where I don't have to worry about it as much because they don't. But uh, they're getting to that age where, where uh, they start to ask you questions. and. You know, I got my own son that says, well, Dad, maybe you should do this. Maybe you should do this. He's only 11. But um, the reality is, is, is you can't let those things, can't let those things affect you. Um, like I said, you know, for us, and we talk about it all the time, in Columbus sometimes the, the hardest thing to, do, to handle is praise. Um, and then criticism is just one of those things that makes you kind of bear down and, and work a little bit harder and, and make sure you're trying to fix those things. But uh, if you let that stuff affect you and, and change your mentality and your, and your outlook on, on what you're trying to do, um, that's when it's getting the best of you. So, you know, whether we've had problems, uh, we address them, we continue to work to get better, and uh, we handle it on a day-to-day -day issue. Now we're going to go on the inside aisle about seven rows back. Uh, Coach, when you look at Clemson on film, do they remind you of, of anybody that you've played? And, you know, when you look at their athletes that they have on the offensive side of the ball, you know, what do you think uh, one key would be in stopping them? Well, I, I don't know that we've seen probably as many of the, the – you know, I guess uh, outstanding receivers. I don't know that we've seen uh, a crew like that you know, throughout the entire season. Um, probably offensively, we, we see a bunch of that you know, similar stuff to what they do maybe from our offense is probably the closest thing that we see. Now, um, maybe not with as much of the vertical game and, and some of the size of the wideouts, uh, but th that, that's going to be a, a challenge to us all. Um, but I think the, the tempo and those kinds of things, uh, the best picture we can get is probably from our own offense. Ryan, you're from this part of the world. Did you know about Sammy Watkins when you were in high school, or you know, did you guys ever cross paths? Uh, yeah, I knew about him a little bit, but we we really never crossed paths. Uh, uh, you know, being from this state, you always hear about some of the good players, and um, I always heard about him from not being that far uh, in Fort Myers. So yeah, I heard about him a few times, but we really never met each other. On the front row over here on the right, CJ, can you also talk a little bit about Sammy and if there's anyone? else like him that you faced this year? Uh, I don't think so. I think he's like one of the fastest, one of the fastest guys in college football. Um, great athlete, uh, you know, playmaking ability is out of the roof. So uh, we'll have our hands full, you know, uh, containing them. But I think our coaching staff will do a good job uh, putting his positions to make plays. Now we'll go Tim all the way out on the left. 
Coach, when everyone knows what Taj Boyd can do, he, you know the stats, the numbers. You know, he makes all the throws. Obviously, a two-dimensional kind of kid. When you look at him, when you have a month to get ready for someone like that, is do you deviate from how you would, I don't know, ordinarily prep for somebody of that nature when you, when you have a month, or do you try to keep it as normal as possible? I guess when you're putting together a plan for how to contain him. Well, the biggest I think deviation is just the time that you have. I don't know that you ever really go away from. Um, what it is that you do, you know, getting better at the things that you do. And, um, you know, I guess you have a lot more time to, to evaluate him and to watch him and to, to try to think of the things that, you know, you can do to, you know, to give yourself a better chance. But, but the reality is, you know, I mean, you know, you, you got to do what you do and you got to continue to get better at those kinds of things. Um, we know he's got all the ability to, to, you know, to make, I mean, we recruited him too, <laughs> you know, so we, we know exactly what, who he is and what he is and, and have watched him and sometimes you have that much time, sometimes you start evaluating and trying to find too many things um, and then putting your guys in the situations where, you know, you're trying to be perfect at what you, you know, at every little thing. When they do this, we got to do this. And the reality is um, what it comes down to is, is, is guys going out there and playing ball, playing fast, understanding what they're going to do. You know, they've got a month too, so I'm sure you're going to see a few new wrinkles and some different things, um, you know, so it's going to have to be that, that, uh, that ability, you know, in that tempo and in that pace for our guys to, to look up, to get a good picture of what's going on, and then to react and play, um, you know, but as far as what, what he can do, I think these guys got a pretty good idea. You know, we, we face a guy that, that's similar in, in Braxton Miller on a, on a daily basis, um, so we, we know the, the threats of both the arm and the legs. Now we'll go over here in the second row on the left. Uh, Coach, right here. Um, reports that Von Bell is going to be starting. Uh, can you a little elaborate a little bit more into the decision why that you guys might have gone with Bond? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think Von right now is, is listed as our nickel. Um, just just with some some injuries and some some issues that we're dealing with. That um, you know he's been there all year. Really, he just hasn't had an opportunity to play as much. And that's probably one of those things when you've got some time um, that you got a freshman guy that you can get in there and, and get more reps throughout those three weeks of of bull prep and. Uh, you know, it's just a matter of time before that guy continues to get more and more playing time for us. And I think this will probably be the, the first week that you'll see him get as much of playing time as, you know, as, as we like. Let's go all the way to the right on the outside aisle. Luke, as a follow-up to the question you were just asked, is an advantage at all for you guys in preparations because your offense is similar to what Clemson's offense is? Well, I, I think it, it is. I mean, it, it helps us. You know, there's some things we can do in practice that, um, you know, it's, it's really tough to manage tempo uh, of a lot of these offenses, and Clemson in particular. Um, but when your offense can go out there and give you that, maybe not the specific same plays, the same blocking schemes and things, but the ability for your guys to get a good feel and a good look at that tempo and those things that, that take you out of your rhythm, um, our offense can do that for us. And I think that's probably, hopefully, something that is really, really going to help us uh, as, as it comes to fr Friday. Certainly with the hot and humid weather, hydration is going to be a big part of what's leading up to the Orange Bowl for the Buckeyes. We heard the Buckeyes talk about it. And remember, you go back to the first game of the season against Buffalo. They talked about hydration. That game, it really wasn't a problem. But the second week against San Diego State, we saw a lot of guys cramping. Yeah, and it's not something that you've really, as a player, you've thought about since those first four games probably. And now you got to kind of think about, i got to drink Gatorade. i got to drink water. And it's because... It's twice, three times as hot as it is here at here as it is back home, and it's just not something that you've thought about. So you got to kind of retrain your body to get that much fluid back in. So that will be one of the Ohio State missions over the next couple days as they prepare for Friday's game against the Clemson Tigers. That's going to do it for us tonight on the QP Buckeye Insider. Join us tomorrow, Tuesday, 9 o'clock in WSN. Much more on the Ohio State Clemson game as we'll talk with Braxton Miller, Carlos Hyde, some of the offensive members of the team as they prepare for the Clemson Tigers. For Garrett Searett, I'm Mark Hintz. We'll see you next time on QP Buckeye Insider.